Hi everybody and welcome to the serverless workflow hands-on series number two. This is an extension to our first uh, hands-on series so make sure you check that out. Um, I'll put a link um, of that video in the description below. So just real quick, uh, serverless workflow is a CNCF sandbox project, part of its serverless working group, open source Apache 2 license and here you can find our community information. So in our first hands-on series, we together created a patient onboarding workflow. So we have different apps and devices that uh, send you patient information as cloud events to our message broker. Uh, these new patient events then trigger our workflow orchestration instances. And our workflow was onboarding a new patient by calling our three available services um, sequentially in this case. Um, each one performing a certain task. The first one registering a new patient, restoring it, the second one assigning a doctor to a patient, and then the third one scheduling the next appointment with the patient and the assigned doctor. In this hands-on series, we're going to enhance our workflow and we're going to look at adding error handling and also recovery or retries in case one or some or all of these services um, are at the time we're trying to do the orchestration are not available or down in fact. So let's take a look at uh, VS Code. This is our onboarding um, workflow written in JSON uh, that we have created last time. So we have a single event uh, state of type event uh, this state will, workflow state will wait for a new patient event, cloud events format, of course, and is going to execute three actions. Each action corresponds to an invocation of one of our three services. So let's take a look in VS Code also at the image or the visualization of our process. And here you can see that with the serverless workflow VS uh, Code plugin, you can easily generate um, your diagram visualization as well. So now let's take a look at um, the UI again for um, our demo. And here we can enter in um, the name of the patient and a condition. When we click on send, send onboarding event, we will from this information generate a cloud event. This will then get pushed into our message broker uh, that event then is going to trigger our uh, workflow orchestration instance and our workflow is going to uh, perform or invoke the three services required to onboard this patient. So when we click here and let's see down here we update results, we see that our workflow has taken, was triggered by this new patient information, um, store the patient, assign the doctor and schedule a new appointment. In most cases, this is great, but if we're dealing with any real world system, we have to think about what if about error handling? What if our services are down? What if, or they're not available or they throw errors? How do we deal with that? And um, so let's take a look at that. So here uh, I have two windows open on top. Um, it's an application that uh, running on port 8090 that's running our three services. And on the bottom is our application that's actually um, going to run our workflow and the UI that we just showed. So let's go ahead and kill the services <coughs> and only restart um, our workflow application or application that is going to be responsible to execute our workflow orchestration. So now what happens is when we go back to the UI and let's say we have add in a new, let's make sure we reload the page here, then it works. So we have a Michael, and uh, let's say he has uh, chest pains, unfortunately. So when we click send on board, again, we're going to send a cloud event to our message broker. Um, our workflow is going to, um, instance is going to be created, but as we've seen here, our services are down. They're not currently available. So when we click send, click send onboarding event, well, we see that our workflow tried to contact or invoke these services. They're not available. And we basically just got a big exception. 
So we did not onboard the user and all the information we tried to enter was lost, not saved. And that's a big problem. And in, in, in any real world application, we really have to deal with that. So let's take a look at the first step. Um, what we want to do with workflow is basically just uh, catch this exception and then try to um, deal with it. So if we look at our workflow um, again, so we have our state, our um, event state, and with serverless workflow, you can define error handling on each state that you define. So let's go ahead and for our event state, define uh, its error handling. So this is done with the on errors array. So the on errors array can contain one or more um, defined errors. And you can also define uh, the transition to the parts of the workflow that can handle this error, or you can end workflow execution. So in our case, let's say we have a one error definition. Um, it has, um, oops, sorry. Uh, we can define uh, the, the actual error. This is a domain specific string, so we can really put whatever you want in there. In this case, um, service not available, uh, that makes sense. And another thing we can do is we can also help the runtime identify that we're looking for a specific code. In this case, we're looking for a 503 response code uh, from our services, the uh, um, um, server that is running our services. And once we handle the error, we just want to basically end workflow execution. Um, of course, you can here also put a transition so you can uh, transition and when this area is called to some parts of the workflow they know for example how to deal um, or, 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 or deal with that error um, but in our case for a demo we just want to go ahead and end um, execution now so let's go ahead um, restart our workflow application Should just take a second. All right, that has started. Let's refresh our UI. So now, when we, for example, add a new patient, uh, again, send onboarding is going to trigger our workflow instance. Um, services are still down, so we are going to get a response code of 503 service not available and our workflow should just end its execution. So when I click onboarding, you see here we didn't get that big old ex runtime exception. Um, our workflow has caught the 503 error, the error that happened, and has, uh, in our case, if we see here, we just ended the workflow execution. Now, a lot of times this is fine, but in distributed systems you have to deal with um, recovery we want in our workflow now to say okay one of these services might not be available currently so let's go ahead and try to recover from that let's issue retries or try uh, to invoke the same service multiple times or sometimes uh, a, a, a number of times and then see if this service becomes available at which point we really want to continue workflow execution as is. So let's take a look what we can do in our workflow instance to add that. Well, one of the things in each error which you can do is we can define a retry definition. And with retries, we say, okay, if any of these three services fail um, for whatever reason we define in the actual error, we want to retry that particular invocation of this service uh, with, well, of course, we have to define uh, how that is done. And uh, basically our workflow is going to issue those retries if that service then becomes available. Um, during one of these retries, we want to go ahead and continue where we at and finish our workflow orchestration instance and complete our patient onboarding. So let's go ahead and 
define our retry. And again, this is a domain specific string. Retries and serverless workflow are reusable. So you can have many error definitions throughout all the states of your workflow. They might want to have the same retry definitions. So here we again have a, a logical name and we can say um, services not available retry strategy. All right, so now that we have defined our retry, we have to go down, see here's our event definitions, our functions. Another thing we can do, we can define uh, reusable retry definitions. Let's go ahead and define that. Uh, we can give it a name. Now this name has to match um, the retry definition or reference that we have defined here. So our name can be here. And we can define a delay. So this is a delay between each of the retries. So in this case, uh, we want to say, let's say, uh, three seconds using a duration format. And we want to, uh, let's say, define a max attempts. And in, this is a demo. So let's say we even want to do retry 50 times at maximum. So it doesn't mean it's going to issue 50 retries. It's going to continue trying the retries um, until the service is available, or if not, up to 50. And then we're going to actually deal with um, here, coming here. So either we, again, perform a transition, or in our demo, we're just going to gracefully end uh, workflow execution. So let's see now what happens. So again, I'm just going to start the workflow application here. The services, again, are down. They're not available. Let's just wait for that to start up real quick. Let's go back to our UI. So now, we enter. Now when we click again, we're going to trigger our workflow instance, um, the error, of the service is not available is going to be handled by our on errors definition. And instead of just ending the workflow, um, the orchestration is going to start retrying it, uh, you know, as, as defining our retry definition. So let's take a look at that. If you see here, we are starting our retries every three seconds. Now the cool thing that you can do, we can start another workflow inst inst uh, instance let's say he has chest pains and now you can see we have if you look at the workflow instance it we have two instances currently they're waiting so we didn't end workflow execution they're still running workflow instances and they're stuck in those <laughs> retries we're waiting and retrying and trying to recover from the services being down now, what i'm doing now on top i'm starting our services finally <clears throat> so let's say they were down for whatever reason for uh, at, at the beginning, but we're going to bring them up. So they're up now, and you see we uh, had um, the the workflows have stopped the retries, which means um, they were successful. And if we go back to our UI, we see that both of our triggered workflow is completed. So the first one for John, we assigned the doctor. And for both Michael, we also assign a doctor and an appointment. So you see how it is easy it is with serverless workflow de to deal with error handling and recovery from these errors in many different ways. Um, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, just to end with this slide, uh, for more information, please visit serverlessworkflow.io. Again, thanks for watching. And um, I'll see you again in the next Serverless Workflow Hands-On series. Bye.